Hey guys, we are back updating the power rankings for Survivor 44 following episode 10, and this episode was okay. I mean, it's not the best, not the worst either, although it could set up an interesting storyline moving forward, but we'll get to that in a moment. But there are eight players to talk about, and let's not waste any more time. Let's get right into the video. So starting off at number eight, we have the boot from this week, but here we have Franny. And I never really thought Franny had much of a shot here, especially after this last episode where despite her calling out the Tikas for playing in the middle and her being open to targeting them, I felt like that was simply setting her up to be a target down the line. Now granted, I think this is a bit earlier than I was expecting, though by the time of Tribal it didn't largely make sense why Franny had to go here. And I know a lot of people had Franny pretty high on their winner contention lists early on, I was never fully on that train. I always felt like a lot of her content in the pre-merge was circumstantial. I felt like a lot of it was so centered around Matt and didn't really prop her up despite her talking strategy at points. And even after Matt went, she didn't really get much of a spike here. She didn't really get a future storyline of her avenging Matt here, despite the fact that the Raw Twos were the ones to do it. And despite the Raw Twos being the one to go after her at their next tribal. And obviously thereafter, she doesn't get too much credit there. And even with her getting this credit for calling at the Tikas, I felt like that was more so just setting at the Tikas to continue to steamroll in the future while undermining people like a Daniel on the way. Now we did see her talking a bit about her relationship with Carolyn on her way out. And really over these last two episodes, she has talked about how she looks up to Carolyn. And I think that content was mainly there to set up for any potentially voting for Carolyn if she were to get to the end. And we'll talk about that more when we get to Carolyn, but I felt like that was never really propping up for any either. And if we're looking at her game more generally, I think it was fine, although there were still plenty of issues I have with it. Now, sort of similar to Brandon, she was actually immune for most of the game, where on Soka, she only went to one tribal in during the pre-merge there, and even then, that was a take out a target in Claire. She never really was in much danger there. But then from the merge on, she was immune for pretty much every round up until her boot, where at the merge, she was on the winning team, similar to Brandon. After that, she was on the winning team of the challenge. She was literally the one to win that challenge, but even in doing so, she screws over Matt, like her closest ally throughout the game. Now, she has said in her exit interview that her and Matt were aligning with Brandon and Kane, and that could have been something in the future. However, even then, Kane was not on the team that was voting, so it was really only Brandon. And with him being closer to Lauren and Jamie, there really wasn't much incentive for Brennan to keep that promise per se, especially after it only had been one round. But then even after being weakened by losing her closest ally, Franny is still being targeted the next round to where she needs an idol plate on her. And yes, while the Tikas did vote for her as a way of hiding their votes to where she was still technically the majority there, it's still not great that she needed an idol to play it on her, especially coming from Danny, who did not really trust her at that point. And even moving forward, she's not even able to hold on to that relationship. She then wins the next immunity, so she's safe there. And then she's voted out at the first round where she isn't immune, largely due to her being a challenge thread. And even within that, she wins a reward challenge that only further increases her threat level. So I think there are still plenty of issues you can have with Franny's game. Now, yes, it's not the worst game in the world. And like I said, she's not the worst player either, but I still think there are a number of issues with her game. And even looking at her edit, I just never really saw the Franny win there. So because of that, she's here at number eight. And with that, there are seven players left in the game to talk about. And as usual, I'll be ranking them based on how likely I think they are to win based on their edit and current game position. And if I'm being honest, a lot of this ranking is pretty boring. Not much has changed, but I'll talk about these players anyway. But at number seven, we do have Jamie, the same person at the bottom of last week's ranking. And again, Jamie's not winning, but this was a pretty funny episode for her where she lost her idol due to Kane, like obviously being voted out with it in her pocket. And she decides to come clean to people by telling them all about the fact that she had an idol and just seeing her like confessionals about how this opens her up and how she's free and that she doesn't like lying is pretty funny. And obviously at the same time, people don't really believe her even though she's technically telling the truth or the truth that she thinks is the case. And I think that's pretty funny as well. I mean, at the end of the day, Jamie's not winning, obviously, but it was still funny seeing her arc across this episode. But with everything in consideration, I do have her here at number seven. Now I'm moving on to number six, and we had the same person at this spot as last week, but here we have Lauren. And again, my opinion of Lauren has not changed. She is not winning. 
And she did get a spike in content here with her finally getting her intro package, talking about her being a single mom and how she has surpassed everyone's expectations, but that was all circumstantial because she went on the reward. Now, yes, she is the only one on the reward to get this content, but even so, considering the rest of the field, it sort of makes sense because she hasn't really gotten any personal content throughout the season. So I guess it was just the time for her to get that. But at the end of the day, I still don't think Lauren is winning. I feel like she's only being shown when it's absolutely necessary necessary, which is why she's here at number six. Now moving on to number five, and we are just continuing with the same order as last week, but here we have Danny. And I don't know how you can look at Danny and not think he's being set up for a downfall here. Now there is a question over when it'll happen. I don't think it's a guarantee that'll happen next week, though it's certainly coming, right? I mean, we have continued to see him being pretty overconfident and just him like continuing to talk down to other people. Like it's not particularly great. And I feel like the edit in general is not really favoring him. I don't really see him as someone we're supposed to be rooting for, especially over the likes of the Tikas at the end of the day. And I don't think the show is really presenting him as being super aware about what's happening in the game either. And I think his move to target Franny at the end of this episode, despite the fact that he had already played an idol on her, I feel like that move is not really going to benefit his game in the long term. Now, yes, you could say that Franny was already targeting him and that he had already expressed not really trusting her either. However, even then, it makes you wonder why he even tried to save her in the first place when he played his idol on her. Where, yes, you can make the case that the Sokas are trying to remain strong. They were trying to weaken the Ratus. But he did this in order to weaken Brandon, which I think may come back to bite him towards the end game. And the fact that he even used his idol to begin with, the fact that he doesn't have an idol anymore. Now, yes, it is in Heidi's hands, and obviously Heidi is one of his closer allies, but I still feel like it's not an ideal move. And I feel like when you look at the edit, I just don't see how you can say that he's going to win this at the end, especially over the other Tikas. So it's for all those reasons that I just don't think Danny's going to win. I feel like he's been undercut way too much which is why he is here at number five. Now moving on to number four, and this person is pretty much just here by default, but here we have Heidi. And I said this before, I still don't think Heidi's going to win. However, I feel like compared to Danny, I feel like her flaws are less apparent than Danny's, where she did get some content here where she does entertain the idea of targeting Danny, which even then like doesn't make a whole lot of sense considering she had been shown to be pretty close with Danny throughout a lot of the season. And even after that, we see her attempt to get something in motion like with Carolyn, only for Carolyn to then suggest the idea of targeting Heidi. And the fact that she even gets votes at this tribal is pretty insane as well. Now, the one thing I will say about Heidi is that she mentioned in her confessional that she was going to bring her idol to tribal, which I thought was an indication that she was probably going to play the idol at this particular round. However, that just doesn't seem to happen, which I found to be a bit strange but I still feel like Heidi just doesn't have enough there to really justify her being a win, which is why she is here at number four. Now moving on to number three, it is the Tika three, and okay, it's the same order. By number three, we do have Carson, and Carson largely got more of the same here. Early on, he talks about it being a chaotic tribal where Kane went home. He focuses on his relationships, he talks about his damage control. He says that he was the one to tell everyone about Jamie's idol, which in turn then caused that idol to leave the game. He says that he can say whatever he wants about Kane now that he's out of the game. He talks about Franny being a challenge threat. You know, like can he show him being pretty involved in a lot of the action there? And obviously he's a big part of the motion to take out Franny. And then right before Tribal, he talks about how he's leaning into his chaotic side, which is more of the same from the last episode where he talked about leaning into his chaotic side. And again, it's more of the same, more of the same concerns that I had last time. Although something that I've been hearing a bit more lately is the possibility of Carson being the fire loser. And I can totally see it. I mean, we did get that shot of him right before Tribal where it was literally him standing right in front of the fire as he was talking about leaning into his chaotic side, which to me makes it seem like there's foreshadowing there. However, even then, I could still see a world where he's taken up before them, particularly if Carolyn decides to start flipping against the Tikas in order to get revenge against them. So I think either way you slice it, I think Carson is still being set up for a downfall. But then again, that's how I felt about him for really a lot of the season. So because of that, he is here at number three. Now we're moving on to number two, and here we have Carolyn. And Carolyn did get a good episode here, 
where we did get more follow-up of Franny looking up to her, talking about how Carolyn is unapologetically herself and that Franny wants to look up to her. And now with Franny out of the game, I could see this being a case where Carolyn gets to the end and Franny votes for Carolyn on the jury, which is pretty good there as it definitely makes Carolyn a bit more likely to win. And even though she was left out of the vote, I think that was a very intentional part of the story here. And I think it could lead to an interesting storyline where now Carolyn feels burned by, you know, like her fellow Tika members to where she could eventually start to distance herself from them, start to play her own game and realize that she needs to start doing stuff to better her own game. Now, realistically, how is she going to do this? I'm not entirely sure right now, especially with her losing a lot of her numbers, but I still feel like Carolyn is being set up for like this revenge story to a degree. And if that's the case, then I could see a world where she gets to the end and has a serious shot of winning the game. Now, I still think Jam Jam is the clear number one compared to her, but I still feel like this was a good enough episode for Carolyn to where she is solidly number two and still has a shot of winning. But I still feel like Jam Jam is the clear number one, which is why she is here at number two. And now at number one, the person I believe is the most likely to win Survivor 44 right now is still Jam Jam. Now I know a lot of focus here was on Carolyn, but I still feel like Jam Jam is being set up to win here. Even if Carolyn does turn against the Tikas, I think Carson is way more likely to fall victim to Carolyn betraying them compared to Jam Jam. Where I still feel like Jam Jam is still getting relatively positive content here. Like the fact that he gets his intro package after losing the reward challenge, I think really says a lot there. Like him finally talking about his husband and him being burned by the fact that he didn't get picked for the reward is clearly an indication that he's being propped up. Later on, like even though he talks to Carson about targeting Franny and leaving Carolyn out of the plan, he does say that if Carolyn finds out, she may not align with them anymore, which I think is an indication that maybe Jan Jam is a bit more aware about the situation compared to Carson. And I think if Carolyn does flip, then Carson is more likely to be the fall guy in all this. So I think it's for all those reasons that I still think this was a good episode for Jam Jam, even if it may be a downturn for his game over the next few rounds. So it's for all those reasons that he is still here at number one. And there we go. That will do it for this week's video. If you like this content, be sure to like and subscribe. It really helps out with the channel. Now I'll be back again next week to update the Power Kings again. So stay tuned for that. I plan to live stream the Big Brother Canada finale when that comes out. So stay tuned for that. And after the season ends, I'll be doing a player ranking. So stay tuned for that. And if you haven't already, be sure to join my Discord server, which you can join by clicking the link in the description. There's a lot of stuff coming your way. But for now, that's the video. See ya.